Hi, my name is Katie and I am completely obsessed with taking old, outdated, unloved pieces of furniture and turning them into new modern creations. This week's furniture makeover is really gonna highlight the power of paint. I'm gonna show you guys how I take a thrifted mid-century modern style bar cabinet and turn it into something super luxe. This is the cabinet that I'm talking about. I snatched it up from a local Habitat for Humanity Restore on one of their 40% off days for $24. I had to take all of the legs off when I got it home because one of the brackets was broken, but that's gonna be a super easy fix. It is classic MCM style. It's mostly particle board with a really cheesy laminate surface, but it's still in excellent condition and it's got great bones. You guys know I always start with a good degreasing cleaner on my furniture flips. It's so important to start with a clean canvas so that you get the best finish possible. And you never really know what is on a piece that you found at the side of the road or picked up from the thrift store. While I was cleaning, I pulled out the glass shelf, also removed both of the drawers and took off all the hardware. At some point, someone had added these extra wood pieces to make the shelf a little bit deeper, but I'm just gonna pop those out. I don't think they're needed, and this is a really great spot to stand up larger bottles of booze. It is a bar after all. After I had everything good and clean, I went back with a little fresh water to wipe away any cleaner residue. I flipped the cabinet down onto its back so that I could get to all the cobwebs and dust bunnies from underneath and also take a look at that broken bracket. This was a super easy fix. I just added some slightly thicker screws back into the existing holes and the bottom corner here had gotten a little bit bent. So I just hammered that back flat. Then I was good to screw in all four legs and get it upright again. I'm going to be changing the hardware so I filled in the old holes with some lightweight wood filler. That took about an hour to dry all the way and then I sanded it flush with some 220 grit sandpaper. I also went over the rest of the piece with that same 220 grit to scuff up the really slick glossy laminate.
All right, so this is probably where a lot of the controversy is going to start. I cannot stand this cheesy etched detail on the glass doors. It doesn't have any texture to it at all, so I'm just going to prep the doors like I do with the rest of the piece and paint them. You can paint glass. You can totally 100% paint glass. I gave the glass panels the same scuff sanding with my 220 grit sandpaper, and then I went back and wiped away all of my sanding dust with a damp cloth. Because this is such a slick surface and I'm painting that glass, I wanted to add the extra holding power of a high adhesion primer. Fusion's Ultra Grip will make their paint stick to just about anything. It's not required for most furniture surfaces, but in this case, I think it's gonna be a good idea. Since it's a water-based product with easy soap and water cleanup, I decided to spray it for a quick, easy application. This stuff goes on milky, but it dries completely clear you can brush it or roll it if you prefer. You only need to do one coat, but it does need at least 12 hours to cure before you start adding any paint. So once I was done spraying this, I left it out in the garage overnight to do its thing. The next morning I came back to my dried ultra grip. It was nice and smooth and ready for paint. I decided on fusion mineral paint in coal black for this guy. So here's where we get to controversial piece number two and three. I am going to leave the hinge and the door installed while I paint this piece. The reason being is that the hinge is screwed directly into particle board. And if I go through and remove all of those screws to get the hinge off of the door, I'm never going to be able to reattach the door in those screw holes. It just won't work. The particle board won't grip well to the screws and the door will never be the same. So for this, I'm just going to leave it all as it is. I'm going to apply a few light coats of paint and top coat and I promise it's all going to be okay. This is also where I decided that I wanted to paint over those brass feet at the bottom of the legs. I thought about repainting them in a gold or trying to clean them up, but when I pictured my overall design, I really wanted that black to go straight to the floor and be a super modern, seamless finish. I loaded up the hopper of my sprayer with the Fusion Mineral Paint. It's an acrylic paint that is made with natural mineral pigments, and it's already a lot thinner consistency than the chalk style paints that I usually use, so it didn't need to be thinned out at all for me to spray it. I let the first coat dry for two hours and then gave everything a light scuff up one more time with some super fine sandpaper. And then I used my compressed air to blow away any of that paint dust that I had created and I was ready to apply my second coat. I've seen a lot of comments lately asking what I do with my sprayer between coats. 
if I clean it out between every coat of paint and I don't. The paints that I use are water-based and are totally okay to hang out in the gun for a day or two or three sometimes. So I just hang it back up off to the side while I'm waiting for coats of paint to dry and then when I'm ready for the next coat, my gun is already ready to go. Once my second coat of paint was dry, I decided to protect it with my favorite Verithane Diamond Wood Finish Polyurethane. Fusion does have a built-in top coat right in the paint and doesn't necessarily need an extra added poly, but since this is a bar and could have a lot of wear and tear, I thought I might as well give it a little bit extra just in case. When I'm top coating darker colors, I like to add a dollop of my paint color right into the top coat to tint it a little bit. It really helps reduce the haziness or streakiness that is quite common when you're top coating black or darker colors. I sprayed two coats of my poly waiting two hours in between. Once my second coat of poly was nice and dry, I brought everything back inside the house and added my new knobs. I found these gorgeous brass poles on Amazon. Before I show you the finished product, let's take one more look at what I started with so you can really appreciate how far we've come. I love this cabinet. I think it came together so well. If you agree with me, remember to do all the things. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all the things. For those of you who are always interested in the financial side of things and the numbers involved in my furniture flips, I'm about $75 in with the cost of the cabinet, primer paint, and my new hardware but I've never actually sold a bar cabinet like this before, so I'm a little unsure on where to price it for my market. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of online research uh, and probably reach out to a couple of my local furniture flipping peers and ask their opinions, but I'll keep you guys updated in the comments when I finally settle on a listing price. I think that's it for me this week. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.